That's why we can be here today. That's why we can sing. And that's why we can truly be alive in God. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's a day we celebrate. And, uh, and Christians all over the world are, are celebrating. And it's just so nice that we can celebrate in person this year. I, th- I think, you know, we've always just taken, yeah, let's give God a hand. Um, I think growing up, you know, we, we, we always just took this for granted, you know, like, like as a family, when, uh, like we spent most of our Easter's actually down at the coast, and we'd always go for the sunrise service, and you just take for granted that, well, services would always happen, and then last year hit us, and we had to have Easter online, and uh, I don't know about you, uh, it was all right, it was all right. God was there in our home and whatever, but it's so much nicer to have people around uh, at this Easter time, and, uh, and Jesus is alive. So I just want to open up in a word of prayer, and, and then we're going to go uh, to the Word of God this morning. Lord, I want to thank you that you are alive, Jesus. We thank you that you conquered death, that you rose again, and, uh, and you have given us new life, and new life is there for us, and victory is there for us. And resurrection power is there for us, Lord. And we want to thank you for that, Lord. And I pray that as I just share from your word this morning, that you just open up the words on the page to us, God, that they would become alive, that they would truly be rhema words, Lord, that truly come and give us revelation and, and just inspire us and, 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 and cause us to, to, to be even more alive in you. So I want to thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, I didn't have anyone thanking me that we didn't do a sunrise service this morning, uh, but I think it was a good idea to have a, an early service, but not too early this morning, because you wouldn't have seen the sun anyway. But, uh, but I, I want to start where I left off on Friday night. So, so, so on Friday night, I, uh, I spoke about the love of God and how the love of God is based on God, not based on us. And, and I read from a scripture verse, Romans 5 verse 8, and it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God's love for us is not based on how good we are or, or, uh, or how much we followed the rules or whatever it is. God's love for us is based on him. And because it's based on him and his character, it's a love that will never end. It's a love that will never stop. It always endures, and that love will always be there for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God was the one that took the first step towards us. It wasn't us as humans that came up with this grand plan of like, okay, we've messed up, you know, we've sinned, we've done all these things, and, uh, and us as humans in our cleverness, we, we decided, well, it, God, it would be a good thing if you came in and stepped in and sorted out our rubbish. No, us as humans were totally lost, totally dead in our spirits. We had nothing, had nothing even to offer God, completely dead. And what God did is he took the step towards us. While we were still sinners, he died for us. So the first thing we need to understand this morning is the love that God has for us and continues to have for us. And, and sometimes, uh, sometimes as Christians we, we, get, we get stuck in the thing of, well, I, I keep failing, I keep doing this, I keep doing that. And I'm, uh, I'm not justifying sin, but so, so some, some, sometimes we feel like I'm just not good enough. And let me just shove that under the carpet. It's there. It's an issue. But I'll just ignore it. And, and, and me and God will just carry on. Whereas God is just like, don't shove it under the carpet. Give it to me. I died on the cross for you. And, the, and his death on the cross was enough for any and every sin. There's no sin too great. There's no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. We have to understand that. So God takes the first step towards us and says, while you were still sinners, Christ died for you. Now it's our response. Are we going to take that step towards him? And that's a step of repentance. It's a step of saying, God, I'm, I'm sorry for what I've done. I turn to you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe in you. 
and we turn and we follow after Jesus. You see, a disciple of Jesus is not just someone that prays a prayer and says, God, forgive me. That prayer is very powerful when it comes from your heart. God, forgive me, I believe in you. That prayer is very powerful. But if, if our Christian walk stops there, we're missing the power of the resurrection. We, 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 we're missing the fullness of God that He has for us. So it's not just the prayer that we pray. From that prayer, it's literally turning and following after Jesus. And what does that look like? Why is the resurrection so important for us as believers? Well, firstly, I don't want to worship a dead God. I don't know about you, but like, I think it's pointless worshiping a dead God. A dead God cannot do anything. He's dead. There's, 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 there's just no point. You know, so, so firstly, there's just no point in life if our God was dead. But his birth is important. His death is important. But those two, without the resurrection, actually still leave us hopeless. Because how are we actually going to live in this life? How are we actually going to be who God has called us to be? So I want to take you to to Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 11. And it says there, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So we have the same spirit when we turn to God, when we repent and we say that we believe in him and we truly believe in him and we start following after him, something happens. The spirit of God dwells within us and comes and gives life to our mortal bodies. That's this flesh and blood that we've got here. This is, this, is, this is mortal. Now that is something to celebrate. And that is something that should absolutely transform our lives. But sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we carry on with life and we, and we just do everything in our own strength. And yeah, we've got Jesus there somewhere. You know, we pray to him and we ask him for things when we really need it. And whatever, but 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 we've missed out on on he's on the inside of us. I was chatting to someone the other day, and 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 as I was talking to him, I, I said to him, you know, us as believers actually have an unfair advantage. And I'm not saying we're better than any unbeliever or whatever. I'm just saying, if you really look at it, we have an unfair advantage in life. We've got God on the inside of us. And He's busy breathing life in us. And He's making us alive. And His resurrection power is on the inside of us. The thing is, are you living in that power? Because I think a lot of Christians are still just living as the world lives. And not living in the power of God. And yes... There are times when God chooses not to do something for us. Maybe a miracle or something. You can even see Paul. He asked God three times to take away the thorn in his flesh. But God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Because my power is made perfect in your weakness. I think that gives me more hope than, than, than having a God who maybe disappoints me because, well, he didn't come through for me or whatever. No, his grace is sufficient for me. His power is made perfect in my weakness. That's us as believers. We are actually very weak people. And this, this, this glory that we've got on the inside of us and Christ living on the inside of us and the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, it's not there so that he can just make you great and that you can look great in front of other people and that you go to your, to your business and you've prayed about something and God's given you wisdom and you come and you say, well, this is what we need to do and people look at you like, oh, you're very clever. It's not for that. It's not for your glory that Jesus is on the inside of you. It's for his glory. And when we forget that, then we start to make life about ourselves. And let me tell you something. You start operating not in the power of God, but in your own power. And you miss out on the God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. But I want to say this morning that our God does do miracles. 
And our God does give us breakthrough and he does give us victory. But so many times we're not walking in that. The same spirit, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Not only that, conquered sin, conquered death, conquered shame, sickness, pain, all those things. That same power lives in you and me. So next time you come to God and you start complaining about this or that, maybe just be like, Lord, you've given me the power to overcome this. Thank you. I am weak. And actually, it's a, it, it's a getting to a place where we, are, where we are humble and in humility. We accept God. I can't do this. Come and do something through me and in me. I believe that this morning God wants to do something. I want to take you to, to, the, to the book of Matthew, chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 8. And this is Jesus that is just talking to his disciples. And, um, and it says there, Jesus telling them, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Those are all things. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. But what I've seen with us as believers, and I also have to look at myself many times, our first response to people is not that, um, I just want to just turn this guy off for now. There we go. Our first response is not, let me pray for you. Our first response is, oh, shame. The Americans don't understand that statement. They're like, shame, what, what, shame, what? You know what I mean? But that's what we say, oh, shame. You know what I mean? We say, someone's going through something, or we see someone struggling or whatever, and we're just like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. You know, that's our first response. Where is Jesus gave us the mandate and he said, go heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, go do that. Freely you have received, so freely give. Freely you have received the, 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 the Spirit of God, the power of God on the inside of you. You have resurrection power on the inside of you, so freely give that out to people. I think it's high time that us as believers stop, stop worrying about what people think about us. Because quite frankly, the way that we do life is foolishness to the world. It is. Instead of first going, ah, shame, or hey, man, what, whatever, you know, we just, I cannot pray for you. My God is a God who, who, who's a God of breakthrough, a God of miracles. Let me pray for you. Pastor Gideon is going to talk about it a bit later, but we've got an opportunity to, to serve people this morning. And I want to say that's, that's the perfect opportunity. You give them some food, and you give them Jesus with that, which is the real thing. The food will just satisfy them for a bit, but Jesus comes and changes lives for all of eternity. It's about time that us as believers, when we're walking in the mall, and I know it's tough with COVID and whatever, but I think we have to also get to a place where we stop just blaming our insecurity, blaming COVID, actually our insecurities, where we get to a place where we see people that need Jesus, and we reach out, we pray for them, we reach out, we serve them, we help them, because that's the body of Christ. Jesus didn't rise from the dead so that we could just have a nice Sunday morning gathering. Jesus rose from the dead so that his power could be seen within his people and through his people and that we could go out and make disciples, not just in our own wisdom, in our own strength, but that we are witnesses of God and he empowers us and gives us the power to be a witness. That's what Jesus died for. He died for the lost to be saved. He died so that the sick can be healed, so the dead could be raised. He died so that all these things, so that people can be pointed to the Father, so that they can be pointed to life, to what we were born for. 
relationship with God. This is a part of it, but it's a very small part of what Jesus died and rose again for. I want to challenge all of us this morning. Will we not just say to God, okay, your word is true. Your word, your, your word is true. I believe this, that you are telling me that heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely have received, freely give. I believe that. I, be, I believe Romans 8 verse 11, which says that the same spirit that, that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. I believe that. And if that's true, God, I'm going to start to step out and I'm going to start to operate in this power. And yes, maybe the first time you pray for something, there's someone, nothing happens. But I, I can tell you, if you step out in faith and in obedience to God, even if you pray for a thousand people before anything happens, it's worth it. Because even just the thing of you praying for someone is pointing them to Jesus already. But I think us as believers have become so, so shy in our faith time for us to realize I've got God on the inside of me giving me the power let me step out in obedience to him and let me allow God to work I was chatting to someone yesterday and uh, I, I it's just uh, it just touched my heart so much and they were saying I sometimes hold the Bible up to God and say here's your promise here's your promise that image has, hasn't left my mind. You know what I mean? But I think we have to do that. It's like, here's yeah, your promise. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it in my life yet. But it's true. It's in you. This is what you've said. Here it is, God. This is what you said. It's not me trying to make up something. That I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. This is what you said to me out of yourself, out of your faithfulness, out of your name that is at stake right here. You see, God's reputation is at stake. His name that is so great, so powerful. He puts that name in us and we can operate in that name. It's not your name that's on the line when you go and pray for someone. I think that's where we sometimes get it wrong. We think, okay, Oliver's now going to pray for this. Oh, that person's not here. Oof. <sighs> I'm so embarrassed because, uh, you know, because of Oliver. Come on! We, we bear the name of Jesus. We've got Jesus on the inside of us. So when we pray, it's God's name. Let me say, and God wants to bring glory to his own name. That's the name we function under. So when we're in obedience and when we step out in faith, and if God doesn't do something in that moment, who knows what God is going to do anyway? Because God's got a way of working with people that we actually have no idea. But I'm saying at least we stepped out in faith. So let's do this. Let's commit that, firstly, that we are going to experience that power even in ourselves. One of the things I'm going to pray for just now is, is that for ourselves, that we will realize that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. That resurrection power is in me. If you need something for your bodies, maybe you, there's just something that's, that's, that, that's not right. Maybe there's breakthrough that you need in your, um, in your circumstance or, or whatever it is. We, we, we are going to pray for that. But the second thing we're going to pray for is that each of us would realize what we have freely been given. And that from this moment, we're not going to make excuses. We're going to say, God, I'm going to start to pray for people. I'm going to start to believe for you to move once again through me. I'd just like to read two scriptures before I do something. And the one is in Acts chapter 1 verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. 
And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. It's amazing that, eh? It was confirmed, you know. That was, and it says here in Revelation chapter 20, 22, it says here, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. He which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Your life 
you showed us the way to truly be great yet this just begins the father's full plan now there is a way to share at this moment and the first call for prayer is is that if you want to share in the resurrection power of God he, he, he's on the inside of you or or maybe you haven't even experienced that and and you haven't given your life over to Jesus you haven't repented of your sins and and turned to follow him and uh, and believed in him this, this prayer is also for you but if you need God to show his power in your life in whatever circumstance maybe it's in your physical bodies maybe it's in a circumstance maybe it's in your family just something you've been trusting for and believing for I just want to ask that you stand right now and we want to pray with you and we want to stand in agreement that 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 that, that God is going to move and he's going to bring breakthrough in your bodies and in your situation so if that's you, I want to just invite you just to stand at this time. Lord, I just bring all these people that are standing before you this morning, Lord. And we believe that the resurrection power of Jesus is within us, Lord. It's alive within us, and it makes us alive, God, and it, and, it, and, it, and it quickens our mortal bodies even, Lord. And it comes into our circumstances, and it brings about breakthrough, God. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in each person, Father. And if there's a person here this morning, Father, that hasn't accepted that yet, God, I ask, Lord, that in their own hearts, that they would just make right with you, that they would just repent, and they would just say, God, I just hand my life over to you, everything I am. I'm turning to follow after you, Jesus. I believe in you. But I ask, Lord, also for those people that, that are believers, Lord, that have experienced that, God, but there's just that struggle, God. And maybe it's even a daily struggle. I ask, God, that this morning, that there would be just a definite breakthrough in their situation. In the name of Jesus, God. If there's anything in their bodies, God, I speak healing, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask for miracles, God. I ask for your power to just come and work on the inside of them, Lord. Lord, in, in, in their circumstances, whatever they are trusting you for, God, I ask, Lord, that you will bring breakthrough, God. Maybe they've been trusting you for a job. I ask, Lord, that you will open up a door that they would be able to walk into your planned job and, and the thing that you have for them to do, God, that they would see that. Lord, maybe it's a relationship that has been damaged. God, I ask, 
Lord, that you will bring about restoration, God. Nothing's too far gone for you. Nothing is impossible for you. Lord, maybe it's debt that people find themselves in. Lord, and that heaviness that comes from that. I ask, Lord, that you will give them the power to make good decisions. But Lord, that you will just pour out your blessing upon them and that they would be dead free, God. I ask for people that are suffering from depression this morning, God. And I ask, Lord, that you will just come and they would realize, Lord, that they are alive to you. You are on the inside of them, Lord, and you have a plan, you have a purpose for them, Father. Lord, and that they would realize, Lord, that they can walk in fullness of joy, God. They can walk in fullness of life. I, I, just, I just feel that there's, there's someone here specific, and you've been walking the road for a long time. But you're just suffering with a depression. You just can't get yourself out of this thing seems hopeless and I believe that God is just saying to you right now come share in my resurrection power you're not too far gone you haven't failed you haven't failed my power is still there for you pray for that person in specific this morning I now want to ask let just everyone be seated again. And if you're sitting here and you're just saying, God, I want you to use me. I want my life to be more than just Sunday Christianity. I want my life to be more than just coming to this place, singing a few songs, hearing a message, and then going and doing my own thing again the rest of the week. Lord, I, I, I want to be used of you. I want to walk in obedience to you when you say, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Lord, I want to walk in obedience to you. And if that's you, you're just saying to God, I want to step out in obedience and in faith. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning as just a sign, a first sign of, Lord, I'm stepping out, I'm standing up. Here I am. So if that's you, I want to invite you to stand this morning. You just want to say to God, here I am. I want to walk in obedience to you. Come and use me. Lord, I thank you for all these people that are standing this morning. Freely we have received. And Lord, I know each person that's standing here this morning is not just standing because it's a good thing to do, God. They're standing because you are burning on the inside of them, God. And they know that it is true that you, the God of the universe, the God of the impossible, the God of miracles, the God who heals, the God of breakthrough, the God who brings freedom, wants to use us, God, to go and be your hands and feet. So God, we stand before you, God, and we say, God, come and use us, God. Yes, we want to say, sorry, Lord, that we've just, just, just not allowed you to work through us Lord. but from this moment on as we stand God we say God we are committing ourselves to you we thank you Lord that your name is over us the name of Jesus is over us we bear that name we are ambassadors of that name we are ambassadors of your kingdom God and all you want is just obedience from us so I ask Lord that your power would rest upon each person that's standing in this place today. And that they would experience that resurrection power through them. I thank you, God, for those people that they are going to pray for, that they are going to receive healings. They're going, they are going to see miracles happen. They're going to see breakthrough and freedom in their lives. I thank you, God, that church will not just happen here, but it will happen out there through these people. So I thank you, God, that you are sending us in your power, with your authority.